And it is great because my next three guests are without doubt icons of British music selling millions of records all over the world and all of them, I'm very proud to say, made their television debuts here on the Old Grey Whistle Test. Joan Armour Trading. <laughs> Dave Stewart. And Gary Newman. And uh, that's a powerful performance you gave us just now, Gary. And, and the look, I mean, the thing that, that, that I always think of with your music is it, it isn't just music. You know, you think outside the music and the way to present the music and the look and the atmosphere of, of what you're trying to do. And I mean, that really does show through on the new record. <laughs> it does a bit. <laughs> Can't hide it. I, I think because when, when, I, when I write things, I, I, I see them as much as anything. I'm, I'm part of what I'm trying to do with, it, with the music itself and then with the lyrics afterwards is to describe what you see. Mm. And, and so there's already a, a visual element to it, you know, pretty much from, from the word go. And I've always I enjoyed that side of it as well. And sometimes I've, I've done it all right and sometimes it's been dreadful. <laughs> really, <laughs> but I mean, really embarrassing, but yeah, you try. Exactly, until you try, you, you know, that, that's it and you're pushing out the boundaries. And, but, but the idea of this record, The Savage, and, the, and, and just tell us how this idea came to fruition. I've been trying to write a novel for a long time, so it's actually start, starting out as a book. Uh, and when I started to write Savage, I really didn't have many ideas, really. And so I started to liberate ideas from the book and I thought I'd two or three and then I'll, I'll get going and I'll find something um, and the book is about a global warming apocalyptic way off in the future it's all gone to desert and as I started to write the book Donald Trump came along and started to say his things about global warming and it made me want to write more about it rather yeah. than just those two or three and I ended up doing the whole album it's not really about that future but it, it's set in that future okay Joan, I have such great memories of your first appearance on Whistle Test. It was 1973, actually, wasn't it? Yes. Um, what I wanted to start off with was I've got a, a new album coming out in the spring. No, no, listen, hear me out. <laughs> I've, I've got a new album coming out in the spring. Uh, I'm on tour September, October. If you want to know where that is, go to my website. <laughs> um, but and this will be my 21st album. Now, why do you think I'm able to say that? Because of the old grey whistle test. Mm -hmm. If, if, <laughs> this is why. Now, when I came onto the old grey whistle test, <laughs> people really didn't know me. They might have heard me, and I have to include John Peel on this, uh, mm. Bob, because mm. John Peel did such a lot for different artists. Well, he again. did for all of us, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, so, so people might have heard me on John Peel, but they hadn't really seen me. Mm. And then I came on the Grey Whistle Test, and then they saw me. And luckily, <laughs> you asked me back, so they got, to, <laughs> they got to see my face again. And then you asked me back and got to see my face again. So the, the relationship that I have with the audience that I've got was built up, really, through the old Grey Whistle and Test. And I think it's also true to say, Joan, uh, I'm sure Dave and you, Gary, probably feel the same way, that in the 70s, the record labels tended to take a longer-term view of building an artist's career, mm. didn't they? So, yes. you know, you appeared on the programme for the first time in, in 73. In 73. Love and Affection burst through in 76. So that's three years that A&M supported your music and supported yes. what you were doing. And that long-term support was so important to artists in those very, days. Very important. I mean, I, I'm lucky, I feel very lucky, because I, I love to write. I mean, I, I, I write because I, I kind of have to. So I had the first album, then in 75 I did another album, and I think I came on the show then mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Then 76, and as you say, A&M really kind of spent their time nurturing people, um, but I like to think that they could see that I was going to get there. Absolutely. And I think that's what they did to a lot of artists. They could see that they were going to get there. Yeah. And they just needed time to kind of mature and kind of get it out. <laughs> <laughs> was that the same with you, Dave? You know, that, that kind of long-term support at that point? Well, I think nowadays it's like they see an artist and they do what I call pick it up, fuck it up and drop it. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> they get a young artist, like a young girl singer or a singer-songwriter, and they go, 
Yeah, fantastic, we're signing you. Now, I just want you to write with these other people, and they get sent to basements all over LA and everywhere, and they've got 63 songs, and they forget who they are. Mm -hmm. And the record company has changed staff about three times, so then they go, who's this artist? <laughs> Actually, we don't understand what you're doing, and they drop them. That, that is a rather familiar tale, unfortunately. Because <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I, I meet them after they've all been dropped. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, the uh, one place, Dave, that you and I know, though, that does handle things rather differently from that is Nashville. Exactly. And, and the country music community yeah. does nurture its artists in, in looking long term into the future mm, for their careers. Well, I think what's happened is, you know, artists tend to sort of like huddle together, you know, this kind of a geographical pull or a kind of lightning rod in certain places around the world, like Kingston, Jamaica, or Havana, Cuba, or Liverpool at a certain time. And Nashville had it coming round again, but now it's kind of welcomed in all sorts of new artists in different genres. Mm. But it's still got that thing about everybody wakes up in the morning and goes, I'm gonna write the best song I possibly can today. Mm. Not, I'm going to try and get as many Instagram likes as I possibly can today. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, there's this world that people think <clears throat> is happening, but it's actually not really happening. It's, you know, it's happening in, I don't know, you've got likes in Taiwan and here and there, but you're not really actually touring in Taiwan yeah. at that time. Yes. Yeah. So what we used to do, cut me off whenever you want, because I, <laughs> I, I, I had a martini while I was waiting. And, uh, was it 7.30, though? It was, it was well past 7.30. I was going, bloody hell. Anyway. Uh, actually, though, one thing I will say, OK, I'm going to pull the three of you together with, with one thought, because all three of you... I was wondering how you were going to pull <laughs> Gary <laughs> Newman and Dave's... <laughs> us together as one thread, I thought. Each of you have pushed out the barriers, that you've moved across different musical genres mm -hmm. and you've been prepared to put, you know, your soul on the line, as it were, to experiment, to push out the, this particular card and see where it takes you, mm -hmm. which is not always a complete success, but then when it is, and I'm thinking, Joan, in particular, about your fabulous success in the Blues album charts in America, uh, Into the Blues, what was yes. that, 2007? 2007, yeah. Uh, you, uh, you got to number one, yeah. and I think I'm right in saying you were the first British female artist ever to top the American blues charts. Yes, yeah. yes, and it well, debuted at number one as well, which was great. It's a brilliant achievement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just I, let me just come back to what Dave was saying, and I think he's absolutely right in the way that young artists are today. But I, I just want to point out one guy, Post Malone. Do you know Post Malone? He's he's a rapper, mm -hmm. and. I, I tell people, you must listen to him because he writes songs mm -hmm. and he sings really well. And when you listen to the, to the words that he's saying, he's telling a, a proper story. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes he goes off into the sweary thing. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he writes really good songs, sings really well, and wants to do a performance. One of, the, one of his songs is called Congratulations, and he's mm -hmm. talking about people thinking that he won't make it and telling him he's kind of no good, but here he is, and when he, now he's made it, everybody's saying congratulations and wants yeah. to be his friend. So I, I think there, there are lots of artists who do want to write. When I look at him, I think he wants to write. Mm. He's not thinking of the success. Mm. And I think eventually, because that's what will happen, you, you'll get success if you just want to mm. kind of express yourself. Yeah. I think that half the, about half the income I've made I've invested into young upcoming artists, you know, just like without ever thinking, I'm going to get it back mm. yeah. because it's well, well it's young, so hard young artists out there, in the future. We know that, yeah. and uh, we'll be seeing another great young artist coming up on the program a little later. But meanwhile, Joan Armour Trading, Dave Stewart, Gary Newman, thank you so much. It's so great oh. to see you. Thank you. <laughs>